Hello, today's episode of Taylor Talks Comics, we're going to be talking about The Complete Future Shocks, Volume 1 by 2000 AD. Okay, so this paperback here is um, brought to you by 2000 AD, and it's beginning the uh, series of collecting The Complete Future Shocks, which are some strips that appear in the 2000 AD um, progs. So, first of all, this book is kind of a square bound size to kind of match the, uh, this is a random trade paperback I have handy here, and it's your standard comic book size. You can see that's the same height there, if I can measure that up, but the width of it's different because it's the uh, 2080 progs like magazines they come in magazine form so you want to fit that so um the complete future shocks they are like twilight zone like um almost like an homage to the old ec comics and there's just strips that run in some of the progs it's not like the progs full of those because the prog also includes judge dread strips and that kind of thing the uh some of the reasons why i bought this the first thing that brought this onto my radar was that you can see the creators here was that Alan Moore's name was listed first and I think he only has like four or five strips in here but he's probably the most prominent name so that's why he's in there um and you have Peter Milligan John Higgins Steve Moore and you have art by Brian Boland Carlos Esquerra, Esquerra um Kevin O'Neill Brendan McCarthy's in here Brett Ewan's so it's the creators from 2000 AD that interested me the most, and I just recently watched the, um, I think it is called The Future Shocks. It's in the title. It's a 2000 AD documentary. It's currently airing on Amazon Prime if you have a Prime subscription, and I highly recommend it. You, If you're not familiar with 2000 AD, it's truly where um, a lot of the main British talents came from, um, they came into the States, they, they kind of got their feet wet into the comic book game through the 2000 AD book. So as you can see here, there's a great table of contents. Um, you get a little intro by Tharg. And Tharg's like the host. He's the guy covered here. And on the back, his name stands for Transmits Hyper Thrills Across the Reading Galaxy. Uh, he's like the host. If you think about like um, the Crypt Keeper was the host of the Tales from the Crypt kind of thing. So that's kind of the idea of him. And they talk about him in the documentary, how they hated the idea of him at first, but then the fans really took a liking to him, so they had to bring him back at one point. Uh, but here's the great table of contents. It tells you each strip's name and what page it comes on, which prog it appeared in, which is handy. And then you, you get the creative team. So you get the writer, artist, and letters on all those. And you'll see some of them say unknown. Um, that's because they weren't the best at, at crediting creators before and I'll show you that here in a second um, and that comes up in the documentary as well but a great table of contents the only thing I wish it had was a date for these on the cover it does say that these strips ran from 2000 or 1977 through 1981 um, and this is the first volume of these these collections volume two did come out late last year so I'm hoping they continue on because I this was such a fun read um, I'm still not actually finished reading through it all but these are all just quick two, four, eight page strips that you can read. So you can like read just a few of them real quickly. And they all have like that twist Twilight Zone or EC Comics ending. Or even just, I mean, a lot of times you'll see people mention um, the twist ending. Sometimes it's not always a twist, sometimes it's just like a punchline kind of type of deal. And not to say it's like comedic, but it's just like really hits home what the idea of the story was. But twist ending, punchlines, you know, in a, in a gag strip kind of way. But they're all science fiction themed, which is the reason why I've, I said it came on my radar because the Alan Moore thing, and I'm trying to become an Alan Moore completist by collecting all of his collected works. So that the fact that he's in here, I needed to get this. The second thing that brought this onto my radar was the fact that lately I've been really getting into a bunch of science fiction um, comic books. So I wanted to kind of double down and get some of these as well. 
So I'm showing you, okay, so, yeah, all the way through page 35, they don't credit the authors or writers on the strip itself because they hadn't done that yet. So they went through 35 progs, I believe, if I remember correctly. Yeah. So this is on Prog, 30, Prog 35, yeah. So this, is a, this took place in Prog 35, which is like the 35th, 35th issue of 2000 AD. And there's no credits on it. So the creative, creators really wanted to fight for that. And it comes up in the documentary in a really interesting way because Pat Mills was one of the head guys for 2000 AD. And it's, it's not that he didn't want the creators to have credit and that kind of thing, but he kind of was against the idea of crediting the creators because he didn't want their talents to be poached, which they eventually will, would be. Um, so here's the first credit card. And this is how they're credited in this credit card thing. And you have uh, script robot Kelvin Gosnell, art robot Kevin O'Neill, lettering robot Pete Knight. And Kevin O'Neill's great because he, he's the artist that did uh, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. And over here you have uh, Ewan, Ewan's and McCarthy. Um, but he wasn't so keen on giving credits because he didn't want their talents to be poached, which they eventually would be with Karen Berger, who went to Vertigo. Um, or who ran Vertigo, the imprint of DC Comics, back in the 80s. And she would be responsible for bringing over guys like Alan Moore and Grant Morrison, Brian Boland, um, Garth Innes. She brought over a lot of the talents from the Europe, um, European comic scene, which people often call the British Invasion, when those creators would come over. And all, pretty much all of those guys that came over came from 2018. And as you can see, the artwork is just absolutely brilliant. You get a nice variety of art and stories throughout this thing, which is fun too. And like I said, they're just like two four, two to four eight page strips. So you can read a lot of them quickly. And these kind of anthologies, like I've been really getting to some of the old uh, adventure news super strips. And then also a lot of the old EC comics, which I'll do a video on as well. And I just really enjoy the, having one of these handy nearby because if I'm reading like a huge omnibus of just like one character at the Fantastic Four sometimes you need a quick break and these are perfect for that you can just get a quick break read a few strips get a little bit of variety in your comic book reading and then um, hop back into that long read of an omnibus that you're thinking of and some of these artists and creators I'm not familiar with which is another great thing about anthologies is, is it's a great way to discover new comic book creators and then look up their bibliography and kind of uh, try to follow them that way. But none of this artwork is bad. I mean, it's all brilliant. And all the stories are fun. Um, and like I said, Alan Moore only has a few strips in here. I believe the first strip that he did, at least for the Future Shock strips, is coming up here shortly. Uh, Barry Clements. Oh, sorry, I just bumped the camera. I'm trying to get better about that. Oh, wait, I don't think I said while well, I'm looking for this. Please like this video and subscribe down below and share it with your friends. I'm really trying to grow the channel. And um, if you know any of your friends like comic books, I'm trying to put a variety of comic books on here too because as I like to discover new things, I like to share them with the masses. So hopefully we can all share new comic books and learn about new stuff. Okay, how about I just look at the table of contents? This is getting crazy. All right, where's Alan Moore at? 247, is that this first one? 212, 204. Okay, so it's back to back strips. Was all the way in page 204. So like I said, the fact that Alan Moore got top billing on this book um, is obviously kind of gimmicky because he doesn't have the biggest presence in it, but Here's his first Future Shock strips that he did. And then he does the very next one too. Um, and he does it with Steve Dillon artwork. Um, rest in peace, Steve Dillon. But it's interesting to see Steve Dillon on art here. He would go on to do Preacher and a lot of the Punisher stuff that Garth Ennis did. Oh, Steve Dillon did this one too. So Steve Dillon works on back-to-back -back strips with Alan Moore. But that's all it is, it's just, the complete future shocks. And then here's some extra shocks it says. Some extra strips. This is amazing. Who did this artwork? 
Okay, sorry. Let's see if I can. Man, I keep bumping the camera. I'm so sorry. Giving people headaches here. What page is that? 275. Massimo Bellardinelli. I'm not familiar with his artwork, but. Or, or she, maybe. I don't know. That is an awesome spacecraft. With great for shortening there. As it's attacking on. So, yeah, as you can see, most of these are black and white. Um, with a few exceptions here and there. But. Black and white comics are great. Don't let that turn you off. Especially, I think when black and white comics are done well, they can be some of the best in the medium. Um, there are issues though with black and white comics. Sometimes it's hard to tell the different characters and stuff if the artist doesn't distinguish them enough with something cool like an eye patch or a scar on their face or different hairstyles and that kind of thing. Um, so you really have to get, have a talented artist that's creative enough to do that. Because um, that can become kind of tricky. The good thing about these stories is that it's not really about the characters themselves. It's more about the, the story and the twist endings and stuff. That's the art. Yeah, so like I said, this is a Complete Future Shocks Volume 1. Volume 2 is out. I'm going to pick it up too because I love this so much. And then maybe I'll do an overview again of both of them. I don't know. But if you have any recommendations of 2000 AD... Uh, books that I should collect. I don't have any of the Judge Dredd. Uh, my brother has a lot of the case files, so I might borrow some from him. But any of the other 2080 titles that have been collected in trade paperback or hardcovers, let me know down below. Um, or if you have a, uh, a beat on a good lot of uh, the old progs, I wouldn't mind getting my hands on some of those and doing an overview of them. That would be pretty cool for the channel. Um, oh, and cover price. In the UK, it's 1999 US dollars, 25 um, but I found this on InStockTrades.com for, I want to say like $13 maybe. But you can find it pretty cheap. And it's well worth it. It's just a fun book to have. So yeah, that's a complete Future Shocks. Let me know down below if you've read any 2000 AD, if you have any recommendations, if you picked up this book, if you picked up Volume 2, um, or anything of the sort. Your favorite British artists and creators would be cool. Just comment down below. Let's keep the conversation going. Like and subscribe. Share the video with your friends. And have a good day.